Are you sick and tired of rains that haven't stopped for weeks on end? Then consider yourself lucky that you didn't live in the Triassic period around 234 million years ago. That was the beginning of a very long rainy season, as in a 2 million year long rainy season. Once, rain didn't stop for 2 million years. You'll learn more about this unprecedented phenomenon after you hit subscribe and ring the notification bell to join us on the Bright Side of Life. So, let's start at the end of the Permian Geological Period. That was the time of the deadliest mass extinction that has ever happened on Earth. Well, no period of history would be called the Great Dying without a reason, right? Around 252 million years ago, 70% of terrestrial vertebrates as well as 90% of marine creatures were wiped off the surface of the planet. Animal and plant life on Earth couldn't fully recover from this catastrophe for the next 10 million years. Nobody knows for sure what caused all these creatures to die out. Experts name several possible culprits, for example, the ozone layer collapse, volcanic activity in Siberia, an asteroid impact, acid rain, and even mercury poisoning. One of the most recent theories, however, states that the cause of the great dying might have been burning coal. Dr. Benjamin Berger, an associate professor of geology from Utah State University, found some traces of lead and mercury, which are both byproducts of burning coal, in his samples of a rock layer in Utah. This layer was formed at the end of the Permian and the beginning of the Triassic period from 251 to 240 million years ago. This theory would explain why almost all living creatures on Earth died out at approximately the same time. Sulfur emissions from burning coal made the oceans acidic and this killed most marine species. Acid rains destroyed forests, bacteria that lived on dead bodies started to produce hydrogen sulfide, toxic gas which finished off the remaining species. Temperatures were getting increasingly higher. That's why at the beginning of the Triassic period, the planet was sweltering, with the oceans hotter than your bathtub and the air full of carbon dioxide from constant volcanic eruptions. And the supercontinent Pangaea was mostly a vast stretch of flat and dry land. However, this couldn't last forever. And approximately 234 million years ago, long-awaited rain fell. And everything would have been perfect if these rains hadn't continued for 2 million years. But how did scientists learn about these events? Usually, they collect information about ancient climate changes from rocks and plant fossils. In the 90s, two geologists from Britain discovered layers of river rocks as well as huge lake and coal swamp sediments. These findings didn't match the image of the dry Triassic period. Surprisingly, scientists managed to discover such evidence of human climate in entirely different places on the planet. This could only mean one thing. 234 million years ago, it was raining all over the world. Now, you might ask another valid question. What on earth could cause such extreme weather conditions? Since this all happened many millions of years ago, scientists don't have a unanimous opinion. But the most plausible explanation is volcanic activity. Approximately 1 or 2 million years before the wet season started, there were several massive volcanic eruptions on the territory of modern-day British Columbia and Alaska. These eruptions, also known as the Rangelian eruptions, lasted for a whopping 5 million years. In some regions, a layer of lava was up to 3.5 miles thick. Besides, during these eruptions, lots of CO2 was released into the atmosphere. As a result, the temperature on the planet became from 5 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit higher. After some time, all this created perfect conditions for the new, much more humid climate. At that time, there was only one continent called Pangaea, but you can imagine how massive it was. Naturally, a significant part of the continent was dry, with hot summers and cold winters. Seasonal monsoons reached only the coasts of the continent and didn't move further. But after the volcanic activity continued for about 1 million years, Earth's atmosphere became so humid and warm that rain eventually managed to reach even the central parts of the supercontinent. The season of rain started. It's no wonder that such dramatic climate changes led to the transformation of the animal and plant world of the planet. 
Curiously, almost everybody knows dinosaurs disappeared nearly instantaneously after a massive meteorite hit the planet approximately 66 million years ago, but few people know about how these creatures appeared on Earth. It happened roughly 245 million years ago, at the beginning of the Triassic period. There are many misconceptions about dinosaurs. First of all, forget about the image of a huge predator towering over trees. A significant number of dinosaurs were not bigger than a good old turkey. Secondly, these dinosaurs that lived at the beginning of the Triassic period were very different from the ones that appeared at the end of this time span. Most of them started off small and grew more and more massive as the Mesozoic era went on. Interestingly, dinosaurs became more diverse and their population skyrocketed after a tragedy struck. There was another mass extinction that happened about 232 million years ago. Some experts link this event with the beginning of the volcanic activity and its consequences. But as soon as the climate became more humid several million years later, there happened a boost of dino diversification. The era of dinosaurs started. Due to climate change, plant life on Earth changed dramatically. It thrived in the new tropical humid climate. Tall trees and lush greenery started to grow in abundance, and dinosaurs began to increase in size. Several theories explain this phenomenon. One of them states that thanks to the hot climate, dinosaurs didn't have to expend their energy on keeping their bodies warm. Instead, they could use it to grow bigger. Another theory goes that the reason for the appearance of huge dinos is the abundance of food, both for herbivores and carnivores. Let's compare several dinosaurs to prove the point. One of the first real dinos was Coelophysis. It was a creature that lived between 225 and 220 million years ago. This dino could reach almost 10 feet in length, but weigh just 60 pounds. No wonder it got the name hollow form. This nimble bipedal predator fed on small amphibians and reptiles. Approximately 210 million years ago, there appeared an utterly new kind of dinosaur, a massive herbivore, Pladiosaurus, aka Flat Lizard. This guy could grow up to 23 feet and weighed more than 3 tons. It was the first predecessor of enormous dinosaurs of the Jurassic period. The main peculiarity of this giant was its powerful tail and strong, separated teeth that helped the dino to munch on tough plants. After revitalizing the planet, the monsoon season finally came to an end. The volcanic eruptions were slowing down at that time, and this also played a significant role in the stabilization of climate. 230 million years ago, the eruptions finally finished. And while by that time, the world had already returned to its old, dry, and hot self, in some aspects, it had changed forever. After the two-million-year-long rainfall, the plant life of Earth changed dramatically. There appeared many types of conifers which then spread all over the place. And weird creatures of the Permian and early Triassic periods gave way to good old dinosaurs. What would you do if another two-million-year-long period of rains was about to begin? Write about your survival ideas in the comment section below. Remember to give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and hit the subscription button to move to the bright side of life.